Hi everyone, welcome to a new series. This one is from um, Moon Valley by Maria Trolle and I am going to just get started. I'm using Polychromos pencils. Um, I'm not sure what this paper is going to be like. Um, I can't remember. I haven't done this book for a while. So I thought I would use Polychromos because it's quite smooth. So I'm starting with my May Green. Sometimes I find that I'm just going to do this bit here, this stem that's hanging up this little ball house, sort of circular house, spherical house. Um, I'm just going to start with the May Green and then add um, some other colours here. Um, because it's quite smooth, I thought the polychromos might work better because sometimes with a really soft, smooth pencil, um, it can sort of slip and slide around if there's no tooth on the paper. Um, if you've got a different version of this book from a different country, the paper might be very different. This is certainly different paper to um, my other Maria Trolley books. It's just different. I wouldn't say it was better or worse, just different. Right, before we do any more, we have got our fairy wings here in the way. Now I've been asked how to colour see-through fairy wings and this is a great page for doing it. Now because we've just got this very simple piece going behind so what we do is we pretend that this is continuing on. Now the great thing is that this is not drawn straight um, which means that I don't have to have a particularly steady hand and then I just colour. So there is the rest of the stem. Now we don't want it to be as vibrant as the stem itself. At the moment it almost is, but that's okay because we've got other layers of colour to go. Um, I'm going to use the chromium green opaque now on my stem. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm going to go along the very edge of it. I want it to look a little more spherical. I feel like it's a sort of, some sort of spherical stem rather than being a flat piece. So I'm going to do that and I'm not going to do very much of it on this one and it will begin to look faded just because the other parts are darker. Oh my desk is creaking. <laughs> second time I started this video, I started it, did a little bit of an intro and then my doorbell went and it was a parcel for my neighbour who I think must be out walking his dog, I'm not sure and uh, then um, I saw I've now started again, I've done very little sometimes you sort of just lose your flow, it's easier to start again especially when you've only recorded like half a minute's worth of footage go back along and being a little bit fussy and so my doorbell might go again a bit when he actually comes to collect the said parcels. He's also um, going to have a couple of chairs that we're getting rid of. Okay so there we are a little bit better. I'm going to just sharpen up my olive green yellowish. If I can find my sharpener here it is. I did my desk. It's always a mistake. Don't do it. <laughs> I didn't tidy it that well. Here we go. This is the olive green yellow. She's very slightly darker than our May green. And I'm just going to work it over here. I still want to try and leave just a lighter bit down the middle. I'm hoping we might get that sort of slightly three dimensional effect. Now you can be as fussy as you like with this. You can just keep it flat don't have to even worry about all these extra colours if you don't want to. It's completely up to you. There we go. Now we've made that darker, you can see that this is much less visible and that was the plan. If it becomes too pale, you can go over it again with a bit of May Green. You probably won't find that's necessary. Alright, let's move on. Let's do the fairy. Shall we do her? can come in a bit closer now because we haven't got to keep the whole of the stalk stem whatever you call it in the picture there we are and now you can see the effect of that coming through the wings 
um, behind the wings. Oh, someone's running downstairs. I suspect they might just talk to me in a minute. But um, anyway, we'll try and do our skin tone and hopefully won't be disturbed. So, um, oh, hang on. Sorry, husband needed to talk to me. He came rushing down going, did you hear the door? Yes, this <laughs> this is the beige red. I know it's masquerading as a different pencil. <laughs> it's um it's an older version, and I'm just going to do it over her face and hands with this to start with. And I'm going to add a little bit of a other of darker colour too. Now the Polychromos um pale skin tones. Are okay, but I have to say I definitely prefer doing them, doing skin tones with Prismacolor. But you know, we're using Polychromo, so that's what we're going to use. This pencil here, this is the Coral. As you can see, it says very clearly it says Coral. <laughs> right now, let's see. Now I want a little bit of sh a darker area here sort of by the side of her nose on both sides and it just helps us to see her nose a little bit in her ear then it can go slightly along the side of her face here and I want to leave a bit of the chin and the cheekbones without much other colour so that they look um, like they're catching the light it's all quite vague at the moment, and then I'm thinking maybe edges of the neck like that, and then maybe the sort of where the hands might be slightly shadowed like that. Now, it doesn't look very good, but we now go back to our beige red and we can start sort of adding a little bit of darker colour. The neck I find to be the easiest, so I'm going to do that first. So I've done that darker red, I'm going to go over it and then layer up this beige red towards the middle and leave a, dark, a lighter area in the centre. Do the same with the hands. And then the face itself, which as I say, I find a little bit harder, but we can just work around keeping the sort of nose free so that gives it a little bit more shape and also the sort of chin where that would stick out a bit. There we go. Now she does have, I don't think I'm going to actually you know, put any colour in her eyes. It's far too hard. It's too small a space. So uh, pencils are misbehaving now. There we go. Right, now she, let's do her wings next. So I quite like doing pearlescent looking wings. Sounds hard. The way I do it, it's easy. Maybe it's not as effective as some. Light magenta. So I want some little areas of pink. I'm actually going to do this piece on the top of each wing and these little bits in a different colour. So I'm going to avoid those bits when I just put my little splodges of pink. I'm going to avoid the green though. Um, you could try and do it symmetrical if you want. Um, not sure if I will bother really. Don't think those little... I'm just going to put some areas on. There we go. Then I want a light blue. Hmm. Yeah, I think the sky blue is probably a good one to use. A sort of greyish blue. Then do a few more areas with this. Like that. Oh, I'll do a bit on there as well. Then I'm going to use a sort of very pale, um, the palest. Um, a violet and sort of fill in the gaps but gently remember leaving that top bit and leaving the uh, 
the uh, green part. Now there are lots and lots and lots of things you can do with wings. Um, you can just put some glitter on them, some stickles, some glitter pen. Now these rest of the wings I'm going to do with this same violet colour but a little bit darker. But not so dark that you can't still see the green through. And the same with these little blobs. Um, yeah, you can use some glitter glue, you can use some stickles, you can use some Wink of Stella, you can use some glaze pen, um, use Sakura glaze pen, you can use metallics, all sorts. There are so many fun little options that you can try. I'm nowhere near finished yet. Well, a little bit near finished. Now I am going to use this Prismacolor White. Now the reason I'm not using a um, Polychromos White is because this one is better. And I want to go over the black lines of the wings. Well, I want to go over all of the all of the wings, but including the lines, which we don't always go over the lines to slightly um, tone them down a bit. If I wanted to make them fully disappear I would use a pen but I just want them to tone down and then it gives a bit more of an impression that the, the wings sort of see through I think that maybe those lines are sort of underneath or something. If you compare the two you can see you've got more of a blurred sort of look which I think helps give that sort of impression of the see-through wing. The only problem with um, Prismacolor pencil is that it can sometimes spread, um, smush the um, print of the page. So you have to be really careful because you can be smushing that print, that black, into your picture which is not ideal seems to be okay on this paper it will vary between papers you've always well, that's not true you very often have a color pencil test page on a page in a book and um, so that you can use that to make sure that your page isn't going to get spoiled by the um, by the pencil I'm going to use a pink madder lake for her tunic jumper top whatever it is yes yeah, so if you don't have a color pencil test page there might be a sort of copyright notice in the book or something at the back I don't know something that you can just test on remember you're just testing a white pencil so you won't really be able to see it but if you just smush it hard over the print you'll be able to see whether it it spreads and smushes the print or whether it in fact um, is fine and doesn't affect the print. Right, so that's her top but it's not, it's very plain. I'm actually not very happy with that. I'm going to go over it again and then we are going to use a slightly darker colour to put some shadow and things in. I've often thought, you know, I thought, oh, when the children finish uni, it'll be so much easier to get lots of work done. It'll be, you know, I won't have to worry about helping them with anything, that sort of thing. My goodness, I now realise it wasn't, I can't blame them. This is the fuchsia, slightly darker pink. I'm going to use it to put some shadow sort of under the arms and things up here. It's actually husband being home. That's, is uh, making meaning that I haven't actually got much more time than before. He's uh, noisy. He, you know, asking me questions. I can you do this and that? You know, can I, can you help me with this? Okay. So I'm uh, <laughs> gonna have to have a little word, I think, later to sort of say, you know. Can I have some time? <laughs> Can you, um, you know, manage on your own for a little bit? 
This is ultramarine. I'm going to use this for her trousers. I think it looks a little bit like it could be denim, but um, it's also to it's the same sort of colour tone as the colour we used in the wings as well. I'm going to sharpen it and then darken a little bit the lower parts of her trousers. I wonder if she should be if she should have bare legs when she's wearing a skirt. It does look like trousers, I think. And why shouldn't fairies wear a pair of jeans? I'm allowed to. And I'm an old lady, apparently. <laughs> According to my young children. But um one of them was complaining about how old they were the other day. I'm like, excuse me, you are eighteen. <laughs> excuse me. You are definitely not old. <clears throat> now the last little bit I'm going to do on her clothing. We haven't done her hair, have we? Oh, I've just broken my pencil into my sharpener. There we go. Um, I'm going to do the neck of her t-shirt and I'm going to use mauve. So uh, if you're um, if you need to sharpen your mauve, this is your time to do it. Otherwise, please bear with me. I won't be long. I don't know why it broke. It's very unlike a polychromo to break. Anyway, oh sorry, mauve. And then just around the neck. I'm not going to press too hard. Certainly not to start with. I think I'm just going to make it a little bit darker. each side like that. There she is. Now her hair. Now I'm always tempted to give sort of fairies um, blonde hair. Oh here come the noisy people coming down the stairs. Um, I'm going to start with the green gold though and make her a little bit brown out in her hair. Um, this will be the sort of highlight colour I guess. It's quite, it makes a nice base colour. Don't press too hard though or else um, you won't be able to put any more layers down. That. Now I was actually thinking that I was only going to do this, I haven't done the end of her ear very well, I just used my beige red to put a little bit more on there. Okay. I had thought I might just do the fairy in this picture but then I decided that I might as well just carry it on. Oh, that's my elbow. I'm fine. Um, raw umber. I thought I might as well just carry on and finish it. Because, um, you know, I want to finish the page, so you might like to. So I'm putting a little bit at the bottom and then at the top of that curl, leaving the centre a little bit pale. Um, it gives the hair some highlights and lowlights. It's a bit easier to demo on this larger bit, so around her ear keep it dark and then lighten it. Make it dark here at the top and lighten it so the central portion of the hair looks shiny. If only it was that easy to get shiny hair, eh? My hair doesn't look very shiny. I've started using a new um, hair product which is very, very good at eliminating frizz. But it also, my hair isn't shiny anymore. It's because, so I've been informed, the product doesn't have um, I'm going to make this bit at the top the shine. This doesn't have artificial silicones and things like that in it to make it shine. Right, there is our little girl. I am actually going to um, leave it for today and just leave it at that. And we're going to have a sort of series of short videos. So there she is, look. Just sitting there on her um, house. I'm assuming it's her house. I mean, we don't know for sure, do we? Let's come out and show it in the context of the whole picture. You barely notice her once we've done the rest. Look, it's such a big, uh, such a lot going on. But um, that um, that gets us started. We've got a lovely little door to do, window. I haven't done her shoes. I can do them next time now because uh, I've sort of zoomed out and started finishing. So we'll do them. Um, I don't think they're bare feet, but maybe they are. Nah. Um, anyway, so we've got the whole house to do. We've got a butterfly and some leaves outside. So it's going to be a rather fun page to do. And I think it won't take as long. I mean, I first 
the details on a person are quite difficult and take you know time to do but I think the rest of it may not um, now I had contemplated putting some sparkle on the wings I'm going to leave it for now and I might put some on at the end just for the sake that I might smudge it if I put it on now and make a mess of it um, particularly if I, if I use my pan pastel um, iridescent medium it will smudge off if I use a pen I might just smudge it as well So, and if I use glitter it will just get everywhere even if it's dry so I'm going to leave it for now and decide at the end um, you might have decided already and already done something and that's brilliant but anyway, I'm going to finish now, so thank you for watching. I'm tuning in tomorrow. I haven't decided what I'm doing next. You'll find out probably at the same time as me. But uh, thank you for watching. Have a super day and happy colouring.